Welcome to part two of making a better player character controller for a 2D platformer. Today, we'll be making more advanced versions of our movement and jump components. Let's get started. Here we are, back in our project, where we left off in part one. First thing we want to change is our left and right movement. At the moment, our movement has no acceleration or deceleration when we move left or right. We also might want to have different acceleration or deceleration when we are in the air compared to on the ground. We're going to change the current movement component to have acceleration and deceleration. We could create a separate component for this, but in this case it's not necessary. Since we're going to use move toward for our x velocity, we can just change the acceleration or deceleration speed to the current speed, which means we have the same functionality as we have now. Here's the code we currently have for our movement component. First, we'll add some export variables for acceleration and deceleration on the ground and in the air. Let's change the handle horizontal movement function so that we can use these variables. Here's the new function. We've added a variable called velocity change speed, which we'll set in the next couple of lines. First, we determine if we're on the ground. If we are, then we check if we're moving. If so, set the velocity change speed to the ground acceleration speed. Otherwise, use the ground deceleration speed. On the other hand, if we're not on the ground, we do the same check to see if we're moving. If so, set the velocity change speed to the air acceleration speed. Otherwise, use air deceleration speed. After we have determined our velocity change speed, we set our x velocity by using the function move toward. Move toward takes the old velocity and adds or subtracts the velocity change speed until it reaches the direction times the speed. This way, the velocity will never go over the maximum speed. Let's run the game and see if it works. As you can see, the player is slower to get to max speed and slides a bit when stopping. Next up, we're going to be adding variable jump height. Now we could change our current jump component, but maybe we still want simple jumping for enemies or other objects. So we're not gonna change the current jump component. We are gonna create a brand new advanced jump component. Let's right click on components and create a new scene. The scene is going to inherit from node because we still don't need any transform information. Let's call this scene advanced jump component. Let's attach a script and get into the code. We'll call the class advanced jump component so we can use it in other scripts. First, let's add jump velocity as an export variable. Then we'll add the function handle jump with an extra parameter called jump released. This will be needed later. I've also added a jump function because we will be calling jump in multiple places. Now that we have our basic jumping functionality, Let's add our variable jump height. We'll add a new function called handle variable jump height with character body 2D and jump button release as parameters. We're checking if we just release the jump button and if we're still going up. If that's true, then we set our Y velocity to zero, which means when we let go of the jump button, we stop going up and our gravity will bring us down. So the longer we press the button, the higher our jump. We still have to change a couple more things before we're able to use this component. First, we're going to the player and we have to delete the current jump component. After that, we'll add the new advanced jump component to our player. We also have to change our input component to register when we release our jump button. We'll add a new function called get jump input released, which will let us know if we just released our jump button. Next up is our player script. We have to change the jump component to an advanced jump component in our export variables. Then in the physics process function, we add a parameter to the handle jump function, which is the jump button release function from the input component. Also change the first parameter of handle jump animation to jump component dot is going up. Before we can run the game, we have to assign the advanced jump component to the player. So don't forget that. Let's run the game and see if we have variable jump height. Looks like it's working. When we release the jump button early, we stop going up and fall down. If we hold it longer, we reach our max jump height. 
Next, we'll start implementing jump input buffering. Now, what is jump input buffering? Jump input buffering is saving the jump input for a short period of time, just before hitting the ground. If we hit the ground within that grace period, we will jump. It just gives us a little bit more time to react. If we didn't implement this, we would have to perfectly time our jump when we hit the ground. Let's implement this into our advanced jump component. First, we have to add a timer to our advanced jump component. Select timer. Let's rename this to jump buffer timer. Set the wait time to 0.1 seconds. And make sure to check one shot. Here's our current code. Because our code is getting a bit long to show on one screen, I'm gonna show this in sections. First, we'll add an export for the jump buffer timer so we can use it in the code. Next, we'll add a function for handling the jump buffer called handle jump buffer. In here, we check if we want to jump and we're not on the floor. If that's true, then we press the button in midair so we can start the jump buffer timer. After that, we'll check if we're on the floor and our jump buffer timer is still running. If so, we jump. In our jump function, we'll stop the jump buffer timer to make sure we don't keep jumping. Here's our final code. You can pause the video here if needed. That's it for the code. Don't forget to assign the jump buffer timer to the advanced jump component. Let's run the game. As you can see, I can press the jump button before I hit the ground and I'll still jump. This feels much better. Last thing we're going to add is Coyote Time. Now, what is Coyote Time? Coyote Time is a mechanic where the player can still jump for a short amount of time after stepping off a ledge. This will make it so the player is not punished as hard when they try to jump close to the ledge. Only a couple frames where you can jump should be enough. First, we'll add a new timer to our advanced jump component. Let's call it Coyote Timer. Set the wait time to 0.08, and also make sure to check one shot. Since physics process runs by default at 60 frames per second, we're setting the wait time to five divided by 60, which is the 0.08. This way we have five frames after leaving the ledge to press the jump button. Next, let's jump back into the code, add an export variable for our Coyote timer to the node subgroup. We're also going to need a couple extra Boolean variables. Add is jumping and last frame on floor just below is going up. Let's add a new function that will tell us if we have just landed from our previous jump. Why do we add a separate function for this? Because it's much easier to read now. You can see in one glance that we check if we have just landed and you don't have to go through the whole if statement to see what it does. If we have just landed, set the is jumping variable to false which means we stop jumping. We also have to add a line at the bottom of our handle jump function that will save if we were on the floor the previous frame. Let's add a new function called handle coyote time. We'll call it in the handle jump function as well. Let's go through the function line by line. First, we check if we're not on the floor and if we were on the floor the previous frame and if we're also not jumping. This means we just stepped off a ledge, so we start the coyote timer. Let's create a function out of this if, like we did for the has just landed function. We'll call this has just stepped off ledge and replace it in the handle coyote time function. Next, we want to keep the player in the air for those five frames of coyote time. Visually, this will look much better than falling a little and then jumping. So in this function, we'll check if the coyote timer is running and we are not jumping, then set the Y velocity to zero, meaning we will hover in the air for five frames. We've started the timer and stay in the air for a moment, but we still need to allow the player to jump when the timer is running. Let's go to our handle jump function and fix that. We could add an extra check to the if statement like this, but it's getting hard to read again. So let's create a new function for this if statement. Let's call it is allowed to jump and replace the if statement in the handle jump function with this function. There we go, much clearer. 
One last thing, we need to add is jumping equals true to our jump function. And we also stop our coyote timer. Otherwise we might have a frame where we could double jump. Here's the finished code for our advanced jump component. It's slightly more complicated than the rest of our components, but if you name all your variables and functions descriptively, then it's not too bad. You might think, why did we not make components for each functionality? Like a component for jump input buffering or coyote time. I didn't do that here because a lot of the jump component variables and functions are intertwined. Class is also not too long, just about 70 lines is not too bad. If this class started to reach 100 lines, I would probably start thinking about splitting up some functionality. We're done with the code. Just don't forget to assign the coyote timer to the advanced jump component. Let's run the game and see if we can use coyote time. It might not be obvious like this, but we can increase the time on the Coyote timer to make it more obvious. Let's do that now. Let's change it to two seconds and see if it works. Let's run the game. It looks like it's working. <laughs> Let's change it back to 0 0.08 for the final value. And there you have it, a more advanced version of our character controller for a 2D platformer. I hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, please like and subscribe and see you next time.